Funding for This Is Nashville comes from you, our listeners, and Alliance Bernstein. Since 2019, employees have impacted our community by giving more than 5,000 hours of volunteerism in Middle Tennessee. AllianceBernstein.com. Alliance Bernstein is not affiliated with National Public Radio. I'm Khalil A. Colonna, and this is Nashville. Today, we're talking about pageants and scholarship competitions. When you hear the word pageant, what comes to mind? Maybe you think about women walking in evening dresses or performing on stage for the talent portion of the competition. Maybe you've even turned on one of the bigger competitions, Miss USA or Miss America, and caught contestants answering onstage questions like, should executive salaries be capped? Or what issues should women senators take on? Or maybe you think about the winner, crying, smiling, and waving, all while she walks through a cloud of confetti. Women who compete in pageants say the glitz and the glam is part of the fun, but they're especially passionate about what they get out of competing. Here to tell us more are Crystal Foote, the current Miss Tennessee USA, and Jada Cook, the reigning Miss Black Tennessee USA. Crystal and Jada, thanks for being here. Welcome to This Is Nashville. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm so excited. Really excited to talk with you both. Okay, so I want to cover a little bit of basics right now. There's a lot of pageants out there. From what I understand, there's thousands of them. The organizations you represent, they sound similar, but they are a little bit different. Jada, can you can you both tell us the what makes your pageant special? So for my pageant, it was founded in 1986, the Miss Black USA pageant. It was founded by our sponsor and our director, Miss Karen Arrington. And what she did was she wanted to make a difference by having a black pageant for African-American women with 21 women to actually represent the United States of America. So with this pageant, she was able to bring unity, not based off shape, not based off um, size, not based off characteristic, but just being African-American women and wanting us to be in a safe space, but also be able to network, be able to build connections, and be able to build a sisterhood. Mm-hmm. Crystal, tell us about your competition, your organization that you represent. Yeah, so Miss Tennessee USA is a preliminary competition to Miss USA, and Miss USA is under the umbrella owned by the Miss Universe organization. Okay, okay. So I know at the state level there's different parts of competing in the pageant that you had to do. Crystal, what were the stages of competition for the pageant for Miss USA? Yes, so I competed in the interview portion of competition, swimsuit competition, and evening gown competition. And then the top five finalists compete in the onstage question. Okay, so what is different? What was the most intimidating or challenging for you? I'd say... The most intimidating portion is definitely interview, right? Because you have to be kind of crazy to enter in a pageant, right? You're choosing for these people to actually judge you. So what you say matters and you have an impact with your words. So definitely the interview has more weight on my heart because I want to make sure I'm being transparent with the judges and conveying the best version of myself. But on the flip side of that, my favorite portion of competition is definitely evening gown. I love being able to show my personality through my gown and walk on the stage with confidence. Okay. Now, Jada, you're, you're kind of nodding when Crystal mentioned evening gown is her favorite part. Is that one of yours as well? It is. I was able to feel beautiful. I was able to walk gracefully with poise and be able to show off a beautiful dress and be able to be confident. So absolutely. Okay. So what are the, some of the competitions for Miss Black Tennessee. So for Miss Black Tennessee, we had on stage question, active wear, evening gown, and talent. So for my talent, I sang Hero by Mariah Carey. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not an easy song to sing. No, it is not. But thankfully, my mom was able to help me with it, and my vocal trainer was able to get my voice to be exactly where it needed to be. Now, you said something. You said active wear and not swimsuit. Correct. What's the distinction? So we do not have bikini style. We wear either a sports bra or leggings, or we just wear biker shorts and a sports bra. And we show off our fitness with that by strutting, by making a fist, by 
you know, showing our muscles and everything like mm-hmm. that. <laughs> now, now I, I have a question for both of you. In the evening gown portion of it, you were wearing high heels. Correct. Now, I've got a lot of sisters, and I remember watching Miss America back in the day, and they would practice walking in high heels, which is not easy to do. Mm-hmm. What is it like? You're wearing this long, flowing dress that you could potentially trip over. You know, Crystal, I want to start with you. How nervous were you out there when it came to your favorite part of the competition, evening gowns, but you're making sure that you don't trip or have a horrible gaffe during it? So for me, this may sound crazy, but I was not nervous at all because I had practiced months and months in advance for this moment. And so I think, you know, practice makes perfect. All of that time and energy spent was well reflected onto the stage for me. And I was very grateful for us at state this year. We had no stairs on the stage. So I had no stairs or steps to worry about just me, myself and my heels. Where did you practice? Were you like walking up and down the street? You're the hallway of your house? Hallway of my house. I went to the gym and would walk in the gym. Um, I had a ballet studio I would rent out in Middle Tennessee and I would walk around and be able to look at myself in the mirror. So lots of different places. Okay, okay, Jada, you walked in the gym too? I did. I walked in the gym. I walked at church. I walked at work. Wherever I have the ability to practice my walk, I do that. Okay. Now, who is eligible to compete in your competitions? So we actually have three sections. We have the Talented Teen, the Miss Black USA, and the Miss Black MS Tennessee USA. So for the teen category, it's 13 to 19. For the Miss, it's 20 to 26. And for the MS category, it's 27 to 45. Okay. So those, what about you, Crystal? What's, what, what are the, who's eligible to compete? Yes. Yeah, so actually, this past year was the first year the Miss Universe organization changed any woman can compete. So I competed actually against a 62 year old. So the age range is 19 and above. And I think that's great to be so inclusive of all ages. What was, what was that experience like? You know, you're here with women from many different generations here to compete in this competition. Did you, did you get close with anyone? Did you, did you take advice from the 62 year old woman you competed against? So the 62 year old, actually funny enough was literally like everyone's mom backstage she was so kind and so helping and giving and i think it was great just to think about the fact that every woman that was there interviewing the interviews must have been so different for everyone you know i'm i myself am 24 and to think what my interview sounded like versus the woman behind me that was in her 30s and serving in the military what that sounded like i mean it's just so inspiring to think of all these people from different walks of life are there representing their corner of their community in Tennessee. All right. Now, the essence of these competitions, how how they choose a winner, is the judges decide. Right. Are you all judged on everything you do? Is it just what happens on stage or your demeanor and things and and how you comport yourself backstage? Jada? I would say both. But a lot of my interviews that I had with the judges were via Zoom. So I had to show my confidence. I had to show my personality, but I also had to tell my story as to why I even wanted to be Miss Black Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Well, who are these judges? Who are the people you're meeting with in Zoom or who are watching you, you know, strut your stuff in active wear? It usually depends. Our director usually picks them out for us, but... They're usually people from different walks of life. We've had senators, we've had business owners, we've had everyone, honestly, to make sure that they are picking exactly who needs to represent Tennessee. Crystal, is that the same for your organization? Yeah, so we have a judging panel of five judges, and they're all from different walks of life. This year, we had a male athlete, we had a business owner, we had a sports reporter, we had a former Miss Tennessee, you name it, we had it. Okay. I want to go to the beginning for both of you. Crystal, how did you get involved in competing? So it was actually back in October of 2017. I did my first pageant ever. I had no idea what I was signing myself up for. And at the time, I was still in the teen division. Uh, I was in high school. And I entered on a whim. You know, I, I wanted to find out more about it. I'd always watched Miss USA growing up on the TV and I wanted to fulfill that dream. I thought I could get to that stage one day. So I started as a teen and first pageant ever, I actually got third runner up. I was like, wow, Mm. I actually did good. And maybe if I come back next year, train, work harder, persevere through it, who knows, maybe I can win. But 
here I am, you know, seven years later after competing with the Miss USA organization, I finally did it. I didn't give up and I'm your Miss Tennessee USA. What has kept you competing for all this time? You know, I think resilience is really within me, but I also want to share the message to young boys and girls across the state and the country, like not to give up on their dreams, to find their yes. And I would be such a hypocrite if I were to give up after telling myself that I couldn't do it after people giving me that no. Mm-hmm. So I kept persevering, kept going. And, you know, finally my dream came true. Yes, it did. Jada, how'd you get started? I honestly started doing church pageants when I was a toddler. So my grandma and my parents wanted me to run for Little Miss Southwestern Christian College, and I won that. And then when I was in the 10th grade, I ran for another church pageant for Miss Congeniality for the Tennessee State Youth Conference, and I won that. But as I got older, I was like, hmm, maybe I could try something different. But my dad and my mom and another one of my church members presented Miss Black Tennessee to me. But what inspired me the most was I wanted to— have a moment to actually present a message out there to the special education community and just a dynamic to be able to be who I wanted to be in that moment. Mm. I wanted to represent my brother in a way that he feels like he has a voice. And tell me about your brother. So my platform is based on the social and health equity for special education students. And my reason behind my platform is because of my older brother, Benjamin. He's deaf and hard of hearing. And my cousin, he has the autism spectrum disorder. But all throughout school, my brother was telling me from kindergarten to 12th grade that he was in the same classroom with the exact same students his entire life. And I wanted to come to him and present his story in a way that I made it seem as though he had a voice. And I remember the day that I actually won the pageant, he came up to me and he was crying and he said, Jada, thank you for this moment. Thank you for allowing me to be able to speak through you. And in that moment, I knew exactly where I was is where God needed me to be. If you're just tuning in, this is Nashville and I'm your host, Khalil E. Colonna. We're talking this hour about pageants and scholarship competitions. My guests are Jada Cook, Miss Black Tennessee USA 2024, and Crystal Foote, Miss Tennessee USA 2024. Now, you both have been involved in pageants for a while. You know, Crystal, since you were in high school, Jada, it seems like your entire life. How do you, how do you respond? How do you act? How do you take it when you don't win one? Crystal? You know, I think there's definitely that time you need right off, right after the pageant where you reflect on everything that you put into it. And it's okay if you don't walk away with the crown, but I I think you walk away with more than that. You walk away with personal growth. You know, for me personally, year after year, I've walked away with sisters and people that'll be my bridesmaids one day. And I think you lean into those relationships and you push through it together because, you know, there's hundreds of girls that compete in these pageants and only one walks away with a crown. I think you have to remind yourself, though, that that girl is your class, though. She is a reflection of everyone that competes, and you have to support her for the year and move forward and think about that. And like I said before, I'm not going to give up, and I didn't year after year. Mm-hmm. How, how do you take not, not winning, Jada? That's actually a tricky question. Um, <laughs> so the way that I— Are you so used to winning that it's an it anomaly? I was thinking about this question yesterday, but I have been able to take a lot of losses more than I have been able to accept my gains. Hmm. And I think my reason behind that is because my dad prepared me when I was really, really young that the losses are going to come. There are going to be people that are going to win up before you, above you. There are going to be moments where you're not always going to win. And so when I do win, I take that, but I also celebrate it with the people that went through it with me. Mm-hmm. So I, my dad has been teaching me a lot about that since mm-hmm. I was a kid. You know, some critics of pageants, particularly over the years, would say that they're sexist, say that they're outdated, say that there's really not much to get from it. You know, it's kind of superficial Mm -hmm. in a way. But hearing you both, it sounds like you both have got not only wonderful relationships that you've established with the people, with the women you competed with, but a sense of self-determination was given to you through this experience. Really? Right. Crystal, what about you? Yeah, a hundred percent. I, 
you know, sometimes when I'm speaking with people that don't know a lot about pageants and they think it is just, you know, superficial, like you said, I like to think of it as a women empowerment organization. I don't even call it a pageant to some people because I feel personally, it's exactly that. I feel so empowered when I'm up on that stage in my swimsuit, in my evening gown, in the interview room with the judges, because I'm being an advocate for my corner of my community. And I hope to share that message that all women in pageants are empowering their parts of the world. Oh, so what's next for you both? You know, you have your titles, Miss Tennessee USA, Miss Black Tennessee USA. When's the next? When's the big one for the entire country? So I'm actually competing next month for Miss Black USA in Washington, D.C. The pageant is going to be August the 4th, but I will be in Washington, D.C. for an entire week just preparing and everything, just meeting all of the contestants and building relationships with them. Mm -hmm. Crystal, when's your big competition? Well, Jada, I'll be praying for you because we both have our big days on August 4th. My Miss USA competition is August 4th in Hollywood, California. And like Jada, I'll also be flying out about 10 days before the pageant for all the events and appearances we have leading up to it. You have a, it's a busy, busy schedule once you touch ground, huh? That's right. All right. So yes. speaking about a busy schedule, you both are, are pageant and contest winners. Are you working full time and being a title holder or do you just put your job on sabbatical as you reign for the year? I am a full time employee for the secretary of state and I absolutely love it. But I also have my own um, business. I have cook up my resume where I create resumes for different people from different walks of life. So I have that and I have my full time job and pageantry. And, and you have duties as the title holder, right? Yes, absolutely. A lot of appearances and a lot of travel. A lot of travel. Crystal, do you work full time? Yes, I'm full time working for Ian J. Gallo in their sales leadership development program, currently serving as a district manager, working with our distributor partners. And I'm also signed with a modeling agency, Click Models. So going to castings all the time. And same as Jada, also traveling the state of Tennessee, doing appearances. What do you love most about doing appearances? Because I imagine you're going to towns where they're super excited yes. to see you both. Crystal, what do you love about that, getting to meet folks from all across the state? Well, my favorite appearance so far was actually, I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee, but live in Middle Tennessee now. But going back to Knoxville for the first time with my crown and sash was oh, just so fulfilling because all these people I grew up with, to for them to see all this hard work that I did start when I was in high school finally pay off was so rewarding. And something throughout the year, um, since winning since March, I wanted to make sure it was to get into schools before they're out for the summer. So being able to speak with children and just seeing their faces light up when I walk into the room and they think I'm a real live princess. And I'm like, no, you can mm -hmm. wear the crown too. And uh, it's so rewarding. Mm -hmm. Jada. My favorite appearance has been me to read with the help of an interpreter for CIL elementary school, the deaf and hard of hearing children. When I walked into the classroom, their faces just lit up. They were so excited. They were screaming. They were so happy. And I was able to be with them, be able to build connections with them with the help of my mom. Mm -hmm. And that was absolutely amazing. Last question for both of you. I love both of you to answer this. When you think about what's next for pageants as a whole, do you think you know, in 10 years, will pageants look similar to what we've seen or will there be changes? Will there be an evolution of this longstanding competition? Jada, you first. I strongly believe that there's going to be an evolution. I believe that women from different walks of life are going to be able to come together again and build sisterhoods, build networking experiences, but also be able to count on each other in those hard times where we actually need somebody to look up to. Mm. Crystal? Yeah, I think that evolution is happening right now for the Miss Universe organization with this year being the first year of no age limit, right? It's very inclusive of all women. Um, and I think moving forward, something I foresee happening is this is such a brand ambassador role. And who knows, maybe social media will become a part of the competition because our lives have become so digital. There's technology advances every day. So I'd be interested to see if maybe in the future that's somehow into the pageant world. All right. Crystal Foote is Miss Tennessee USA 2024 and Jada Cook is Miss Black Tennessee USA 2024. They'll both be competing on August 1st, August 4th, pardon me, to take home the national crowns. Good luck to you both. Crystal and Jada, thank you for being here. 
And again, good luck as you head off to the national competitions to represent the great state of Tennessee. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. We, all right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, the current Miss Tennessee is here to share her story about what it was like to compete in the Miss America contest. We'll be right back. Funding for This Is Nashville comes from you, our listeners, and Music City Prep Clinic, Nashville-based provider for prep and offering comprehensive sexual health services in an environment designed to be safe, professional, and shame-free. Learn more at musiccityprep.org. I'm Khalil A. Colonna, and this is Nashville. Today, we're talking about pageants and scholarship competitions. Now we're turning our attention to the Miss Tennessee scholarship competition. Brandy Mills became Miss Tennessee last year and went on to compete in Miss America. In a few weeks, she'll help crown the next Miss Tennessee. Brandy, grateful to have you here with us today. Welcome to This is Nashville. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you shared that you're not a pageant girl. You didn't really see yourself competing. How'd you get into the game? Well, I, I mean, I just never saw myself as the the traditional pageant girl, especially because I had a mother who wasn't like super into it. It kind of just happened. And, you know, I had a dance teacher who became my first local director. She was already a director back home in Houston. Um, and she was like, hey, you should compete. And I was like, hmm, OK, sounds uh, appealing. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was a very competitive kid, you know, grew up dancing and okay. uh, doing gymnastics and singing. And so I was like, well, why not? Let's just try it. And I, it, stuck. it stuck. And here I am 13 years later. <laughs> what was about it? What made it stick for you? You know, aside from the competition aspect, I think just the personal development and the growth. You know, I always thought that I was horrible at public speaking. I mean, you'll get really good at it doing this job. But, you yeah. know, having that that skill is so valuable when you're when you have to walk into a room or you know, do an interview. So it's it's a skill that I will forever have for the rest of my life. And when I realized that I was building building those skills, I was like, wow, this is actually, you know, personal development. And it really challenged me. You know, I always love a good challenge. OK, um, so I think it really challenged me to do something that I was wasn't initially great at. Mm -hmm. um, and over time, we got better. We, we got there. So <laughs> you, you love challenges. The big challenge is competing in Miss America. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Compared to the other pageants and the competitions out there that you've been a part of, describe Miss America for us. You know, it's it's a weird feeling. Even I'm trying to picture it like sitting here right now. And it's like you show up and all of these girls have gone through the exact same process that you've gone through. Um, and it's kind of surreal. It's like, wow, everyone really put in the work, the time, the effort, the years, <laughs> the blood, the sweat, the tears. Right. Um, and. You know, it's wild to see people who kind of have different backgrounds but competed in the same thing and are, you know, of the highest caliber. Um, so you walk in and you're kind of nervous, first of all. I mean, I was always nervous, you know, competing at the state level. But at the national level, you just didn't really know what to ex expect. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's kind of a toss up. But, you know, I think for me, it was I went back to that like personal development piece. Um, all I can do is my best. Um, and so getting ready for Miss America, I really focused on just putting it all out there and leaving it out there. And I, I felt like I did my best and, you know, I'm content with my performance and I'm, I'm happy I did it. And it's something that I will forever look back on mm -hmm. um, and be proud of. OK, how did you how did you train for the competition? Like, did you go to the gym like our previous guests and walk on heels on the treadmill? Did Ooh. you like walk <laughs> around the house and have your friends or family members pop you with these really deep introspective questions and wanting a impromptu answer for, from you? What was your training regimen like? Well, I think as a dancer, the walking piece kind of always stuck with me. I would say it's like riding a bike. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I focused more on the interview skills. You know, America is a little bit heavier on the interview side. Our interviews are, they used to be 10 minutes. Now they're eight minutes. Um, and there's only so much you can say in eight minutes, right? So you have to be short and concise with your answers in order to, you know, get your point across and be able to have enough questions for them to get to know you. Um, so for me, that was the biggest thing. And I used to think, like I said, I used to think I was horrible at public speaking. 
Um, and that was a big challenge growing up. But I think getting getting to Miss America, um, there is something that kind of just clicked at, as a state title holder. You you speak so much that you just get used to. And if you're mm. not good at it, you're going to get really good at it really quickly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so who's eligible to compete in Miss America? So uh, it is, I believe we just changed age groups, but I believe Miss is 18 and 26. Fact check me. But 18 and 26. And we also have a teen program. Um, which is 13 to 17. So I do have, there is a Miss Tennessee's teen. Mm -hmm. Uh, She lives in East Tennessee. Okay. So uh, she goes to ETSU. So (laughs) she's busy over there doing her thing. Um, Do you all ever collaborate on appearances? I I see her whenever I'm I'm on that side. And actually she's in Nashville quite a bit. Okay. So, you know, I've seen her quite a bit throughout this year, which is, so wild because that girl will travel for an appearance. Okay. I'm like, wow, you really drove four hours over here for this one thing. I mean, I guess that's my job, right? Like that's a part of my job as well, but like that's my full time, you know, job as Miss Tennessee versus being a student and also doing that. That's so wild. I I do want to talk to you about the particulars of the travel that you have to do, but break down, break down the, the categories that you're competing in and your favorite, give me your favorite as well. That's a hard one. That's a tough one because um, I've become fond of all of them over time. Um, so we have fitness instead of swimsuit. Swimsuit, excuse me. Um, we used to have swimsuit, but now we have fitness, which is it's a change of pace. Um, talent, evening gown, on stage question, and a private interview. Private interview. Yeah. So I mean, it just means everybody else can't see your interview. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. What would what do you do for talent? I am a contortionist, so I did an acrobatic dance to a medley from the musical Hamilton. I am a Hamilton n- nerd through it and through, so that that was something I, I really wanted to take with me and <laughs> drive my point home. Love a- Hamilton. Acrobatic dance mm-hmm. to a tune from Hamilton. Oh, yeah. You brought the house down, I imagine. Oh, my gosh. It was, it was fun. It was a good performance. I loved that. It was one of my favorite costumes I've ever had, and we modeled it after one of the costumes in the musical and it, it's wild to have a dance costume that actually looks like this old, you know, army-esque like puffy sleeve thing. I'm like, what is going on here? But I mean, hey, it's it's nice to paint that picture for people for sure. Now you mentioned we, we, you had a team with you. Talk to me about the team that you brought with you and some of the teams that you saw in the Miss America competition. I imagine some were pretty small and some were extraordinarily big. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it really varies um, state to state. I mean, and we have, you know, teams, quote unquote, um, at the state level as well. We have local directors and those organizations. But at the state level, we have a board. And so each board is different in every state. The size of each board, the resources that each board has, just it's just very different. Um, and so it, it's it's a wild time, especially because you know, I competed in two other states before I got here. I kind of just competed wherever I was. I grew up in Houston, so I competed in Texas okay. and California as well. And so it's weird to see boards that I knew before. <laughs> I'm like, hey, guys, I'm still here. <laughs> you remember me from like 10 years ago? <laughs> uh-huh. But I'm just at a different state now. Yes. There's exactly. no hard feelings, I imagine. No. No. I'm, I mean, I would hope not. I mean, that's that's <laughs> a, that's a them problem, not a me problem. <laughs> so, so, so you would say that there's not a lot of drama during these competitions? You know— it, I feel like there's drama if you make it drama. I'm not a dramatic per. I mean, actually, that's a lie. I'm a dramatic person, but I'm not the drama, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> big personality, but I stay out of it. <laughs> like, uh, let's clean slate, get out of here. <laughs> all right. If you're just tuning in, this is Nashville, and I'm your host, Khalil Colonna. We're talking this hour about pageants and scholarship competitions. My guest is current Miss Tennessee, Brandy Mills. Okay, so the world, there is the act of competing in this world. But when you win times, things change for you. You've right. won the title and a scholarship, but in some ways you, you mentioned it a little bit before with the travel. You, it's a job you, you want. Oh, it right? is. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a full, I mean, some girls will go on sabbatical from their jobs and their full-time careers. And I think, you know, in the last couple of years, a lot of girls did that. At the beginning of my reign, I was working full-time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was an organic chemist at Vanderbilt. And it is really difficult to balance both because, you know, you might be in the lab the first eight hours of your day and then turn around and have an appearance that night. And it's it's draining. It is. But I love it. And you have to love it. Otherwise, 
you know, you'll be tired by the end of your year. <laughs> what are some of the responsibilities you have to do as a title holder? So I do a lot of, you know, a lot of different things. I don't really know if I have a set job description, but um, I do a lot of community service events and those ha- tend to be my favorite. Each girl has a community service initiative. Mine personally is mental health and athletics, which is awesome. Um, so I love getting to do things at mental health clinics or just talking to, um, you know, young athletes. That's that's one of my favorite things. Um, I'll do things like this, being on a radio show, which is also <laughs> one of my favorites. So, you know, it, it really varies from week to week, day to day what I'm doing. But I, I honestly just tell them, put it on the calendar <laughs> and I'll show up and do my job. I hear that. OK, so a couple things I want to ask. Um, I want to talk to you in a minute about why you chose mental health and athletes. But first. People are taking sabbatical from these from their jobs. Do you get paid to do this? Yes, absolutely. And it's it's a privilege, too, because not every I feel like not everyone does hearing everyone's stories from different states. Um, But I I get compensated for the work I do. And even if I didn't, I would still love it. But I'm so blessed to have, you know, that resource, because if you you know, I'm personally not from Tennessee originally. Don't tell anyone, guys. Um, mm. But, you know, not having my family here, it's not like I can just move home yeah. to family and be able to, you know, do my job throughout the year. So it's it's nice that it, it pays the rent. You know, it's a little extra yeah. <laughs> here yeah. and there. But <laughs> yeah. Well, so your your mission, your cause, mental health and athletes. What's unique about athletes and how how, you know, mental health affects them? You know, this is something that I, I actually talked a lot about at Miss America on stage too, is just this idea that we were taught to be so strong. And I think growing up as an athlete, like the main thing was always never let them see you cry, right? Like mm-hmm. you have to be tough. You have to be strong to get through it, which in a sense is true. That's, you know, there's, there's a time and place. But I think that that idea and that stigma is well and alive in athletics. And having been in so many different spaces with different athletes, I realized that that was a common thread. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I... I had the privilege of cheering for the Titans for two years and not that it was something that was an organizational issue, but I think the culture of athletics is what needs to change how athletes, athletes talk to themselves. Sometimes it can be an organizational issue too, but how athletes talk to themselves and what they expect from themselves has to be balanced. I mean, you see athletes like Simone Biles, right? Mm -hmm. Like who pulled out of the Olympics a few years ago and everyone, a, a lot of fans and Americans were upset and they said vile things to her oh yeah and it's like thinking about how she even has to deal with that right like that'll add a whole nother layer of mental health you know to the to the pot like Mm -hmm. so it's really about like really managing expectations like if i you have to you know take a step back and say i need a moment like that's absolutely acceptable but it doesn't seem to be as common commonly accepted now i think now you're starting to see it a little bit, but, you know, if there's no more Simone Biles left, like, how yeah. am I going to go win the gold medal? And, you know, I think that mental health in our society in general is very, very prevalent. But I think that athletics was something I wanted to hone in on because it was personal to me as an athlete. And you're using your voice and the position to right. go around and talk about yeah. that. Now, several title holders over the years have said that being winners is fun, but it also can be kind of lonely. Has it been that way for you? You know, it. I, I think it comes with the territory. It, it really does because there are moments where, you know, I do a lot of traveling and not having someone with me at every appearance, you're in a room full of people and you're the only person you know, right? <laughs> and I think there's a part of being a title holder that you you just turn it on, if that makes sense, um, for certain things. Like, doesn't matter what's going on. Like, I'm here to do my job and that's a part of the job is, you know, making your communities feel loved and, you know, just being there and being present. And so after a long day of doing that, it's it's kind of like you go home and you just want to melt into the couch and do nothing for yeah. like three days. Like I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're doing a lot of traveling all mm-hmm. across the state from one side to the to another. It's an incredibly long state. Yep. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> are, are you are you traveling by yourself? Yeah. You know, I I wish that I wasn't. I will say sometimes, you know, I use my resources if it becomes overwhelming and I'll say to someone on the board, hey, I need someone to go with me. But I I realize that it's a common thing for lots of places not to have travel companions. And some states do, like big states like Texas. If you're traveling the entire state of yeah. Texas, wild. Like you probably need to have somebody there with you because, you know, after a long day and you're exhausted, and, you know, if you have to 
drive home, mm-hmm. like that that could be a safety concern as well. Is like I am I am exhausted and I probably shouldn't be on the road, right? Um, I would absolutely stop if I felt that way, but you know, I think that it's something that needs to be discussed in pageantry in general, and every every title holder is different. Um, not everyone's job looks the same, but I think as far as travel goes, there definitely has to be some parameters, which we're working on in Tennessee, which is great. I think travel a travel companion is something that I've voiced a couple of times, and they've been pretty open to to that suggestion. But again, most people don't know about those additional resources, and so I think it's about educating people on how you know they can help other title holders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, in a few weeks, Miss Tennessee 2024. The competition oh, man. is going to be taking place. <laughs> You're going to pass on the crown. What has the experience of being the title holder? What has it given to you different from what you got out of competing? I think it's one of those things where there's, there's nothing that could have prepared me in particular for this job, if that makes sense. Like you do all the prep on stage, but that's just that's the tip of the iceberg. That's the, that's what people see. Mm. But the job is completely different. Right. And you're you're essentially auditioning for this job that entire week of competition you've prepared for it and you think you're ready to go but once you actually have that crown on your head you might do some things that you you never expected like i never thought that i would mc ah and they threw me in and said swim and i i swam. i'm sure you did a good job at <laughs> it, it. Was, it was do or die okay <laughs> we've, we've gotten better at it over over the course of a year but that first time, it was a little rough. I was like, this is crickets. <laughs> Where's the script? Is there a script? <laughs> Sometimes there isn't. Yeah, and there wasn't. Yeah. And so that's exactly it is, you know, there might be things that, that you take on that you're just going to have to, it's do or die. And so you better get out there and do it. And there's nothing about competing that can really prepare you for that. Mm. So, I mean, you can prepare all day to get on stage, but when it's time to go, it's time to go. <laughs> you got you know, to figure it out. Done. So what's next for you? You know, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of in between. I've I grew up singing, acting and dancing and kind of talked a little bit about entertainment. And so part of me is is wanting to do a full dive into that. And, you know, Music City is a great place to be for a lot of that, too, as well. Um, I think coming from L.A., like I've been blessed to have a lot of opportunities in entertainment. So kind of just getting back to that, it took a little bit of a pause for school. And then when I moved here, Um, And perhaps getting back into the lab, that might happen. But entertainment may be the focus next, I think. You'll be be the classic triple threat, sing, act, and dance. Oh, man. (laughs) Brandy Mills is the current Miss Tennessee, which is a part of the Miss America organization. Brandy, thank you for being here with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to take one last break. When we come back, we'll be talking with Miss Davidson County, USA, who has been a part of pageant since she was 10 years old. You can join the conversation by tweeting us at This Is Nashville. Stay with us. I'm Khalil A. Colonna. And this is Nashville. Today, we're talking with women who love competing in pageants and scholarship competitions. Joining us to continue that conversation is Mandy Kane. Mandy, who currently works in public relations, has competed in pageants since she was 10. She's been Miss Teen New Mexico in 2003 and is currently Miss Davidson County 2024. She also recently competed in the Miss Tennessee USA competition. Mandy, thanks for being here. Welcome to This is Nashville. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Great. Awesome. Okay, so really excited to have you here. In January, Miss USA pageant, they announced that adult women of any age would be able to compete. Previously, they were 18 to 28. Those were the only women who were eligible. So a few years ago, the organization lifted this requirement, and now contestants Okay, so it says here that contestants must have never been married and had no children, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So all this is changing. How did you find out that they were lifting the age limits on contestants for Miss USA? 
Yeah. So in the last couple of years, I like I, I definitely knew about the change to, you know, previously married women and mothers being eligible to compete. But in the fall was when they made the announcement that they were suspending the age limit. And it was right around the Miss USA competition last year. Um, so as soon as I heard about that, I was very excited to, to go ahead and throw my uh, hat back in the ring and uh, get back at it. Okay, so you'd been doing pageants all through growing up in New Mexico, New mm -hmm. Mexico represent. Um, you you stopped for a while. Yeah. Why did you stop? Well, I think it was a combination of a couple of things. I mean, certainly aging out. Um, and then also I got married. So I got married really young when I was 21. And at the time, again, you could not be competing if, if you had been married. It, Miss America and Miss USA both were, were for unmarried women. So I moved into competing in the Mrs. America system um, locally in New Mexico for a couple of years. And it just wasn't as fun as I, you know, had in the other systems and, mm. you know, had other priorities to focus on in my life. I, you know, certainly had my marriage. I was in business school. Um, so I just focused on other things. All right. So what does it mean to you that women of any age, any marital status, if they have children or not, can finally compete? I just think it's so great because I think women have not only so much to learn from pageantry at any stage in their life, but so much to contribute um, in their communities and in really um, being advocates for causes that they're um, excited about and really um, creating relationships that are going to continue to benefit them and um, the communities where they live. Is it progress for our society, you think? I think so. I mean, especially because I, I think that being an older contestant, um, age discrimination in, in the workplace continues to be a reality. And I think women are told as they get older that they're going to become less relevant um, as a result of that. And so I think this is a really great step in the direction of seeing that, you know, you can be empowered and confidently beautiful at any point in your life. OK, I want to go back a little bit. To, yeah. to learn how you first encountered pageants in your life. Yes. You know, you've been in a lot, thousands of them. How not, did, not quite thousands. I mean, there, there's, several, there's yeah, thousands there's of, of, My of parents pardon would me, say that. Yeah. thousands of, of, of pageants out there. Yeah. What, what, what got you into it? Yeah, so I grew up always watching Miss USA and Miss America on television. I was really drawn into the glitz of the, of the whole thing. And so as soon as I learned that there was a pageant that was going to be in um, Albuquerque, which is, is where I grew up. Um, I begged my parents to let me compete in it, and they gave in, and uh, <laughs> I, I competed. And, and I, you know, it really was um, an experience, but ultimately it was, it was something I was really hooked on. You, your parents gave in. So at first, were they asking you, yeah. why do you want this, or we're adamantly against it? My parents were very, well... I should say that my parents handled this in, in different ways. So my mother um, was very much against it. And I should mention that, you know, around the time that I was starting this journey in pageantry was around the time that JonBenet Ramsey um, was killed. Mm. And so that was something that was, was of concern to my mother. Um, my father, though, his... Um, my, my stepmother at the time had competed in Miss Arizona USA. So she was um, a pageant um, queen when she was younger. And so when I knew that I wanted to do this, and especially when I saw that one of the pageants that was coming up was on a weekend that I was going to be with my dad, I uh. knew that I would probably um, be able to, to get a little further um, with him than my mom. And that's kind of what happened. If you're just tuning in, this is Nashville and I'm your host, Khalil E. Colonna. We're talking this hour about pageants and scholarship competitions. My guest is Mandy Kane, Miss Davidson County 2024. All right. I want to talk about the perspective you have. Mm -hmm. You grew up doing this. You did it as a, you stopped as a young woman and here you are now, Yeah. you know, a little bit older with more grace into the position. Yeah. You know, a lot of pageant contestants talk about confidence and how competing has given them the chance to develop their confidence and develop their skills. But a part of it is also dealing with like being judged and mm -hmm. constantly compared to others. It's kind of a, in many ways, it's like a real life social media mm -hmm. experiment, if yeah, you will. Definitely. What it's it, it that's easy to create insecurity and anxiety for anyone. You know, what works for you to really navigate that? Yeah, I mean, I think that over time, one of the greatest blessings that comes with um, aging, and I'm 40 now, so it, it's really the the loss of 
caring about what other people think mm-hmm. about you um, mm-hmm. and just really learning to love myself. And I, I, I'm at a stage in my life where I don't ask really for permission from anyone. I just pursue things that I know are going to bring me joy and make me happy. And this was one of those things. And, you know, I was concerned um, going into it that this might stir up feelings because, you know, growing up when I competed in pageants before, there were, were elements of insecurity. But when I competed at Miss Tennessee USA at this point, it was a really interesting experience to to realize that I'm not in a place in my life where I'm intimidated by women anymore and instead really energized by them um, and was just so inspired by the company that was at Miss Tennessee USA this year, which is, you know, what Crystal was talking about just a little bit ago. Um, it really was a great organization and group of of women. And yeah, it's just, I, I've just been able to um, learn to, to love myself. And that has really, um, I, I think that really served me well going into a competition where there can be a lot of, um, mind games played if you're not prepared for it mind games yeah. can you go into a couple of those mind games. well i don't i gosh I, I, that makes it sound like it's super manipulative and it's not i just mean that like you can get very in your head like mm. i remember when i was younger i would walk into the room or i would see like the day would come when they would post you know all the contestants competing and in, in the in the pageant online and oh gosh and, and thank god I, I grew up competing in pageants before social media but you know there were still times when you know all of the contestants would be posted online or something and I would go through every woman's photograph and and every headshot was almost like this rubric for assessing my own inadequacy uh. and so I knew that and, and my, my coaches and I talked about this that you know when I got to Clarksville which is where Miss Tennessee USA was that I would have that moment of reckoning that I, w- I would walk in the room and I would see everyone and I would just have a moment where I doubted myself and, and, and be really intimidated and that moment never came I was expecting it and it was very surprising when it just never it never arrived instead I was just very much um, at peace and, and really enjoyed just being there and getting to know everyone. And I, I really had a great time. It says something about knowing who you are. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. Now, I, think I, want, so. I want to switch gears a little bit because there's been some controversies with Miss USA yeah. and Miss Universe recently. There have In been. fact, at one point, something came out that you almost considered not competing. Yeah, definitely. So a couple of months ago, it was probably two weeks maybe before before Miss Tennessee USA, um, there had been a video that kind of surfaced where the president or the owner of the Miss Universe organization had indicated that effectively the the women who were now going to be eligible under these expanded um, rules basically weren't going to have a shot of of winning the pageant. Like, you know, you can Mm. show up, you can compete, but like you're really not going to do well. And that kind of threw me for a loop. Um, And to be totally honest, just... There have been so many things going on with with Miss USA this year, and I think everyone is aware that um, you know Miss USA 2023 resigned a couple of weeks ago. Miss Teen USA as well, and, and Miss Teen USA as well. Yes, definitely unprecedented. Um, but had I been in another state, I, I probably would have stepped away at that point um, and given this some time to to really think about whether this is something I wanted to do. Fortunately, I think in Tennessee, um, Kim Greenwood, who's the director here of the USA system, is known for running an exceptional event. And so I knew that I was going to have a really great experience regardless. And and that truly was the case. So I'm really glad I went through with it. But there was a moment when I was kind of seeing some of the um, issues with the larger organization that um, I I did really consider whether or not this was something I was going to really want to do. And and I realized that it just it wasn't enough I, I just wasn't going to let it hold me back. This was something I had wanted to do for a really long time. I'm sure that had to burn a little bit because not only are you spending considerable amounts of time, I'm sure it, it's look, preparing for pageants is not free. Uh, no, it's it was it was definitely an investment. It was definitely an investment. Yeah. All right. So, you know, if someone is out there listening, thinking, you're like, you know, I might want to compete. What is one piece of advice you would give someone about how to get into the game? I think that. To your point, there are thousands of pageants. Um, and so I would encourage someone who's really interested in, in dipping their toes in the, in the waters here to look for a system that aligns with their values and then the strengths that they bring to the table. Um, for example, I'm not someone who has a really great um, 
history of, of talent. And so the Miss America system really just wasn't a fit for me. Um, I, I was not successful in it growing up when I competed in it. Um, and so there are other systems that, you know, score differently or have different areas of competition. Some, you know, programs are really focused on community service. Others, that's not really so much of a thing. Um, so my advice would be to find a system that really aligns with um, not only who you are today, but the woman you're trying to become and uh, pursue it that way. Will you be competing anytime soon? I don't know about soon, but I'll, I'm definitely going to be competing again. I'll probably compete in Miss USA or I'm sorry, Miss Tennessee USA again next year. Um, it really, really was one of the best experiences of, of my life. It was it was a great time and I'm really looking forward to doing it again. OK, do you a question for you? Mm -hmm. Do you think there should be more pageants for men? No, because I, I think men have everything else. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Like, like what? Like I, I just, I think that, you know, men tend to have the upper hand in, in other areas of, of life. And I think this really gives us an opportunity to have something where we can um, excel. Uniquely for women. Yes. Not, not, I'm not saying that men and women compete together, but a pageant, right, right. you know, men get yeah. up there and show how smart they are. How how hey how how well you can walk in fine dress shoes? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think for me, like pageants have always really been about empowerment, and I see this as a vehicle for female empowerment. Um, and so I just th that's really how I feel about that. We're gonna keep it going. Yeah. Keep the pageants going. Yes, definitely. I really want to thank you so much for being here. Mandy Kane works in public relations and is currently Miss Davidson County USA. Thank you again, Mandy. Thank you so much. And thanks to you for tuning in this hour. This is Nashville as a production of Nashville Public Radio. Today's episode was produced and directed by Catherine Cece's. Our technical director and board operators, Liv Lombardi. The masterminds behind our theme music are LaRange and Namir Blade. Listen Listen back at thisisnashville.org or wherever you get good podcasts. And the conversation doesn't end here. Tweet us at This Is Nashville. Find us on Instagram and tell us what you want from our show by filling out our quick survey online. And you can also call to leave us a message, 615-760-2000. This is Nashville. I'm Khalil Lake Colonna. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. And be good to each other. <laughs>